Is that a hand grenade or an Easter egg? In Halo, the answer is both. Halo is bringing the video game series to life in ways large and small on Paramount Plus, and only real fans will recognize the series' deeper references. These are the Easter eggs you missed in Halo Episode 1. Halo starts out on the planet Madrigal, one of humanity's outer colonies and a major center for the rebellion against the UNSC. In the opening scenes of the show, Madrigal is shown to be relatively barren, save for occasional mining colonies. This peaceful facade is shattered by a surprise attack by the Covenant, who kill all but one inhabitant of the settlement they target. The Sangheili warriors, more commonly known as the elites in the games, are in turn dispatched by the UNSC Spartan Squad Silver Team led by the Master Chief. The Spartans. Madrigal may not ring any bells for newcomers to the Halo franchise or even for those who play the games, but the planet does play a significant role in the spin-off novels, particularly Joseph Staten's Halo Contact Harvest and Tobias Buckle's Halo The Cold Protocol. In the original canon, Madrigal is one of the first planets to be glassed by the Covenant, a genocidal act of orbital attack that eliminates all life on a world and renders it essentially uninhabitable. The show's version of Madrigal is a bit different, as it remains unglassed well into humanity's war with the Covenant. However, with the heavy narrative focus still being placed on the planet, its original fate may eventually catch up with it on Paramount Plus as well. The first episode of Halo kicks into high gear almost immediately, with a fierce battle between Silver Team and the Covenant Sangheili elites. It's a great way to show off the kind of action fans can expect from the series early on, and it also features a number of specific references to the Halo video games. Several of those Easter eggs come in the form of the Covenant's weapons and sci-fi gear, much of which will be instantly recognizable for longtime fans. While the design of the Sangheili armor is a bit different in the show, one of very few design divergences, their weapons and shields are spot on, right down to the little details. Anyone who's played the Halo games on the higher difficulties of Heroic or Legendary will empathize with the Madrigal Militia's inability to penetrate the Elite's shields, defenses that are heavily resistant to bullets but more susceptible to plasma weapons. The new series does a great job of keeping these qualities of the shields consistent. Another great touch in the Madrigal fights is the Plasma Pistol, a classic Covenant weapon from the games. When one of the Silver Team Spartans fires a charged shot from the plasma pistol at an enemy Sangheili, a vent on top of the gun pops open to vent the excess heat, just as it does in the games. Additionally, the magical fight features incredibly faithful recreations of the energy sword in the Elite's active camouflage. If you thought the Halo show would break the trend of awkward first-person sequences in video game adaptations, you'd be wrong. The first episode barely gets 10 minutes deep before the camera jumps inside Master Chief's helmet to show a heads-up display, or HUD, that's very reminiscent to the video games, right down to a radar in the bottom left-hand corner, targeting recticles and a readout of his currently equipped weapon and available ammunition. It's a bit silly, but that doesn't stop the show from using the HUD view repeatedly through the magical battle. Although the first-person view itself feels a bit heavy-handed in its callback to the games, there's a more subtle Easter egg incorporated into the scene that only fans of the games will recognize. At one point, Master Chief takes a heavy amount of plasma fire from an attacking elite, and his HUD shows that his energy shields are temporarily depleted. He quickly ducks behind the nearest available cover to wait for his shields to come back. This isn't just a nod to the mechanics of the Halo games, which were some of the first to introduce the concept of regenerating shields instead of a traditional health pack system. It also uses the exact same sound effects for the shields being broken and subsequently coming back. Okay. The Halo show uses a number of specific audio cues from the games, and the shield noise is sure to flash players back to all the times they had to hide behind cover. Within just the first action sequence of the Halo TV series, Master Chief and his Spartan comrades exhibit a wide array of moves and tactics pulled directly from the video games. Many viewers will recognize the weapons themselves, which include the standard-issue UNSC assault rifle, sniper rifle, handgun, and marksman rifle. But the allusions to the games go further than simply the guns themselves. The way Master Chief fights on Madrigal is spot on to the combat flow Halo players know so well. Because of his armor and shields, Master Chief maneuvers pretty freely in the open, only using cover when his defenses are briefly knocked out. He also makes good use of hand grenades and melee attacks, two key pieces of the so-called combat puzzle that's always made the gameplay in Halo so engaging. One specific sequence has Master Chief toss a grenade at a group of elites, use it as cover to move in close, and deliver some brutal physical blows with the butt of his rifle that batter down the enemy's shields. It's an approach anyone who's played the games will be familiar with, even if it might not be so easy to pull off at home. To top it off, Master Chief picks up a fallen minigun dislodged from its mount and wields it like it's nothing, a specific reference to a mechanic implemented in Halo 3. In their investigation of the Covenant ship on Madrigal, Master Chief and Silver Team happen upon an excavation site and a mysterious artifact at its center. The device turns out to be a keystone, a relic from the ancient Forerunner race with ties to the mystical and deadly Halo rings. All of this lore, only alluded to in the show's first episode, harkens back to the games in interesting ways. 
but there's a specific easter egg mixed into the scene that only eagle-eyed viewers will catch. When Master Chief first activates the keystone by touching it, a symbol appears, a relatively nondescript circle within a circle. This symbol is actually the logo for the video game Marathon, another property developed by Bungie in the years before the release of Halo. Curiously, Marathon features many narrative similarities with Halo and can be seen in some ways as an elaborate prototype for the franchise. Themes like human colonization of space, alien wars, and rogue AI all play into the Marathon story, just as they do in Halo. One of the more interesting parts of the Halo show is that it features scenes from the Covenant side of the war as early as the first episode. These scenes take place on High Charity, the massive spaceship-slash-planetoid that serves as the capital of the alien force. High Charity appears prominently in the Halo games, as do the Prophets, the enigmatic race of older, wizened spacefarers who lead the Covenant forces. The show's version of the vessel is pretty much an exact match to the High Charity of the games, a bulbous, mushroom-like structure of the Covenant's signature purple. The Halo scenes aboard High Charity in the series' early episodes include a number of smaller Easter eggs for game fans as well, such as references to the Great Journey, the core belief of the Covenant religion, which is tied to the Halo rings, and specific characters like the Prophet of Mercy and the Prophet of Truth. A major change in the Paramount Plus Halo series is the human character Maki, who appears to be a genuine ally of the Covenant. Her inclusion is one of the major departures from the games, in which the Covenant was never known to accept a human into their ranks. It remains to be seen why this particular human was. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite movies and TV shows are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.